Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, everyone, Basil Chapman. This is Tuesday, February the 15th. I hope your uh, Valentine's Day was good. Uh, we've got the Dow. We're looking at the Dow. Uh, oops, I'm so used to saying down that I've got to actually say up. Up 310 points at 34,877. Just stopped dead at the uh, both the 200 period exponential moving average. Oops, no, sorry, the, the 14 period moving average, and the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Gosh, these, these two little lines are so powerful. Uh, and that's one thing. The other is, I've drawn in the arch formation that should go at least to a, an attempt at a second arch. Let me just change my so it doesn't shake like that. Um, that it should at least attempt another. I've got it up. But it could be short, it could be big, it could be like that, it could be anything. We don't know. There's a lot going on. So we've got a little bit of uh, some lessening of the tension uh, in the Russia-Ukraine situation. Um, and that, that's really led to a bunch of things. Let, let me just run this first. Up, up 300 in the Dow. The uh, S&P also had a big futures earlier, a big rally. Now it's pulled back a little bit from the high of 44.67. It's up at 44.51. It's still up 50 points. Uh, you know, after the drubbing that it had for three days, this is just nothing stopped at the nine, not even the 14 period moving average. It needs to go further. I'm suspecting that if we can get through Thursday, Day, with with the market actually higher than it is right now, then we've got a chance at least to go early into next week. And then I think we've got to start being really careful. And that's the point where I suspect that I'll start to look at um, either the um, short of one of the indexes, uh, just going, going more to the short side for that move down that I'm anticipating goes into the end of Feb, maybe the beginning of March. I'm not sure yet because we haven't even seen how this is going to unfold, whether or not this today's rally is going to hold every rally so far. If you either shorted it uh, for the last four, three days or um, actually gone to the um, – just stepped aside, you would have been better off. So we'll see. The day is young. And, and actually, let me just show you this for the moment. Uh, the synchronicity of – look, the left side move in the two-minute E-mini chart S&P from the low that was made at about 5.20 this morning, and that low was at about 440 uh, – sorry, 4,440 – Actually, it was 4,439.50. When peak A peak, B peak, C peak, D, it pulled back and the MACD pulled back and the stochastic, but the nine held above the 14 and then boom, it goes to peak E with a silent doji candle previously, then a high, and the high turns out to be, uh, was that the 4468.50 level? No, 446, 4468. Four, 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 Zero, zero, round number. And then it pulls back. And look what it does. In almost the equal amount of time, there's my pivot point, or I like to call it the plumb line, the midpoint, almost the equal number of bars on the left side to the number of bars on the right side, it comes down. It's uh, just about five, six bars late, and it takes out that low, and it does a retest of – uh, that is a 200 period exponential moving average support, hugs it, hugs it, hugs it, and then boop, goes down below it, and it goes to what? 400 4,439.00. Exactly the same. Then it tries to rally, and it comes back and it makes a, a, an arch formation, comes back and retests at what? 44.38.75, just a fraction lower, goes up to a peak A, peak B, comes back. And now I ask you, how important is the 200-period exponential moving average? Look, since this is a two-minute chart, since 8.58 this morning to exactly where we are now, an hour and 20 minutes or so above that, um, we're right sitting on the 200-period move. I mentioned this. Why? Because wait a minute. Don't you see something similar? Hey, wait a minute. Look at this. The Dow 
Look at the 200 period moving average, how important it is. Look when we were last there. Let me just scroll to the left. Look at that. You didn't need the 200 period moving average. You talk to people about 200 period moving average any time in the March, April period, December, all the way from the November, uh, what was that? Was it November 9th? 10th, oh, October the, um, the 30th of 2020. We've, that's the low. And we did a retest from the low of November of the 200 period moving average. So how important is it? For me, it is part of my huge Sears and Roebuck toolbox of, of uh, uh, technical tools. And I'm saying this is important. The fact that we went under it, now we're struggling to go above it, uh, is really important. That's in my work. Um, and here we are. We bounced above it. Look at the pink. When the um, green nine period moving average went under the 14, back on that doji candle recovery high after the 48, 18.62, 4th of uh, January all-time high, pulls back to 45.82.24, and then it bounces where to? It bounces to 4748.83, peak A minus, because the dreaded H pattern took out the left side low. Remember that, that channel inside track support level became a repellent zone, and we plummeted down to the 42.22.62 low of the 24th of January. And then we ran up and then we started to stall where? Right at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So that makes this 200 period moving average. That makes the arch formation. That makes this attempt at a second arch formation imperative because if there is a slide from here, you're only going to get the one dreaded H pattern and we could tumble if the, if the Fed says something tomorrow that this market doesn't like. Woo! 4300, the low of the uh, th th 28th of January, uh, that was actually 42.92. But that area becomes a target. That gets taken out. It's really bad. So it's really important right now that somehow, some way, we we, si we find some kind of support that just says that the rectangle formation that I drawn in some time ago becomes the rectangle that it trades in and frustrates the bulls and the bears long enough to usurp a tremendous amount of energy. So if and when we have that final big thrust to the downside, I, I don't see a three-year uh, correction here. I see um, basically uh, a, a two, two months go into the third month. January the 4th is a high. I see this going into March. At this particular point, I'm not, I'm not at all dismissing the fact that this inflationary uh, the perspective we have must change back to the 1970s. Some of us remember that very well. In fact, it was fantastic trading the mini recessions and the big rallies. You just get out of your position and they get right fully back in on the day that you think is a low and a rallies, and then you get out. It just, I think, it was like three months and three months and just kept doing it. Um, and, and it's a tradable thing, but you don't, you don't go to new highs. It takes a long time. Okay, so with that said, um, I'm going to go to uh, the QQQ, and I'll say exactly the same thing, except that this arch formation is way weaker. So sell mode in the daily of the QQQs, sell mode in the Chapman methodology in the monthly, in the weekly chart. Monthly chart, look at this, candle. Talk about candles, Roman candle, I wanted to show you this. Uh, where was it? Oh, CRM, look at this. A Roman candle, Chapman Roman candle right there last month. The rule of thumb is if this wick, if you take out the midpoint of the wick for, in the shorter term for a certain period, be careful you can take out the left side low. It's exactly what uh, sales did. So we'll talk about the candle in the monthly chart, that Roman candle in the S&P. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by the claimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Bobo, so I just wanted to show you something, all technical analysis, that's what I do in my show uh, all the time, and Friday is usually technical, uh, technical Friday uh, in the Chapman Wave methodology, but let me just show you, I drew this in as a rectangle formation saying, other than this aberration to the upside, this is the area that you've got to see, and quite quickly now, from this moment that we're talking, it's at 4447 in the E-mini, yeah, within the next, oh, I'd say five minutes without taking out 4443, or you want to see a quick move to the 4453, 5253 area, and that'll say, hey, now we can start a climb towards the 4460 level, and we'll see what happens. Um, it just that's that rectangle formation, it lasts a lot longer than your patience. When it looks like it's going to break out, it just doesn't. But the fact that we've had um, market action above that. And quite substantially, all the way to the 4460s, says this is in play. All right, let's get back to our nitty gritties. And what we're looking at here is, um, I was talking about the S&P. S&P is at 54 right now, coming back a little bit from the intraday high. You're looking at the QQQ. One, two, three. Oh, sorry. I wanted to show you this as well. Before I do anything else, look, here's the QQQ. Why, how important is the 200 p moving average? I don't have to go all the way back. Look how important. Not only did it go under, but it kept trying to go back above. Then on yesterday, on Monday, we went under it, closed a fraction under it. Now we're trying to go above. The further away from the 200 p moving average, the, the, the price that you're following, the tradable, can go the greater the chance that it'll move up towards a resistance level. And this particular case would be 40, what is that? 14 uh, period um, moving average. Right there. Taking a little time today, 44.83, up towards a 44.83 level. And that's just the daily. The, the actual look of the pattern says that this is a huge consolidation. The longer that we can usurp energy, the greater the chances are when the next really, I don't mean just kind of hint of bad news but when the real bad news comes in maybe it's another another week or so or perhaps early march the big test will be how does the s p and how does the dow how does the qqq ndx 100 how do they all treat the left side low of the 24th of january that's really the big issue and my suspic suspicion right now is that a lot is going to depend on whether there's enough energy to move further up 
And the QQQ is only at 5.58 right now. Look at this doji candle. It just cannot, whoops, of yesterday. Let me just move that away. I don't want to block it. This should be in that area right there. There it is. So a little gap up. Now you've got the 9 pre moving average of 354.70 to treat. 356.77 is the 14 period moving average. It's a lot to do. Uh, can I do it? Well, we'll see. And I'm saying let's go through all the way to Thursday afternoon. And in my show on Friday, we'll be talking about these patterns. IWM, let's just get this out the way. There's a lot to discuss. Okay, Given back a big chunk of the game, but it's still up 250. It's kind of lagging. It has shown signs periodically that money could go into it. But I need a lot more evidence to say that you actually want to put a buy-in at this particular point, not in this particular phase. Let's go to the SMHs. Of course, there was a takeover. Intel took over an Israeli company. Um, nice big move up 7.33 at 272.30. Horrible action. I mean, I've got, I've got the larger arch. I don't even want to divide it into the Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day heart by going down and then back up for the m shape pattern. Uh, the second half of the of the heart. Uh, this is just one pattern that says, "Wow, there's a there are a lot of problems in the um, semiconductor area." My suspicion is that that's going to translate into great difficulty for the SMHs to to get up into the 290s before they retest the 260s. They're at 272 right now. Um, there's just a lot to, to talk, talk about, and it, it's not acting very well at this particular point. Now I want to go to gold. Gold is down 17 at 1852. Remember, I liked it when I did Tom's show yesterday. I was saying, for me, I've always considered gold. Yes, it has another aspect when the miners are and and silver, everything's in tune. I think that's that can give you fantastic moves up in the in the gold index. I don't like it when gold is treated as a commodity of fear. That's the old tradition. I'm talking about 100 years, 200, 300 years ago, where gold, where you carry little bits of gold. I, I know family members, that, late family members, that survived because they had gold in their shoes and they could, they could pay off on their way out of whatever country it was that they were fleeing. So that's different, but that's the mentality for the geopolitical scene. And that's what we were saying. Look at that scream up uh, that, that really took it from 1820 area, whoosh, to the upside. Look at crude oil, crude oil, whoosh, to the upside. And then all of a sudden, in one day, we've got one of the biggest moves. Day is young. The biggest move to the downside, down 4.35 and 91.11, down um, 4.37. And still nothing. It's it's not even at Friday's low. So um, this is what I'm looking at here is that the chances are that crude is going to be in play for quite some time. As long as there's conflict um, in that whole area of the geopolitical economic side of gas. And I just for now like to do the natural gas uh, picture has it actually? Yep, I thought it would rally a little bit if if the if crude came down because often they move in counterpoint. But this is also the season where natural gas kind of fizzles. It might have a bounce, but this is where you start to look and say, "Well, this must be culminate." And it's funny that in this particular season, this winter season, natural gas hasn't been able to hold in the 560 area. I think the 550s was the highest, and now and then it pulled back all the way under four, and here it is at 426. Did have a bit of a spike, so I'm watching this very closely. Now let's go back because I I got onto this. I didn't finish silver. Uh, silver, yeah, this is the, what we were talking about yesterday, um, both in my show when I did Tom's show at, at three. Um, that the 200 period exponential moving average. Is, uh, I, I don't want too much time on this, but I wanted to say that look how often. The 200 period moving average, silver for the past, since it broke down on the, on the 19th of July, 19, uh, 2021, at 25.12, it is, not, look how that was, the magnet of the 200 period moving average was test, 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 whoops, break. That was testing support. Now, test resistance, break. Try to get it again at a peak D, break. And since then, it's touched it, been up above for about a week and a half. 
always failing. It cannot last there for more than about two weeks or so. And this is the same thing, 200 period moving average. How important is the 200 period exponential moving average? I'm not going to say. You just look at the chart, let it tell you. So that's all I'm saying. When it starts to trade in 24.55 area and holding, I'll say goodbye, 200 period moving average for now. Let's see what happens. All right, that's that. Now we want to do, what haven't I covered? Oh, I've got to do this, a TLT. So let's go to the TBT, the inverse right now. This was a peak D. It didn't make a new high above 1998. It was made yesterday. Oh, did I finish that correctly? Yep, 1998 on the 11th. And look what happened. The TLT went to a lower low. It's gone to the leg D to the downside. It was at an alternate count G slash C. And now it's gone to the D. And it's right from this area, this area right now, as we're speaking, from 135 as we go into Thursday. Okay, I'm not counting tomorrow. I'm counting Thursday. Can TLT have a bounce to the 139s? Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back that guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, so let me just go to the Tiger, uh, so the Tiger TV questions here. Um, Basil Exxon and CVX, I've been a busy beaver loading my wagon with these stocks on sale this morning. Uh, please, thoughts, thanks. Yeah, but um, I will, this is... I, I, as I understand it from just you know, spreading, reading what you say, I think you're a longer term player. So what I'm going to say is the action in Exxon at that high that was made in the 82, around about the 8264 level, I suspect is really a peak D. 
Um, in my work, it has none of the characteristics of a PXC at this particular point because it's just a little too long to go sideways to the downside. So I think this is in a digestive phase. If it's an alternative that chapter wave unconventional flat base restart, and that's really pushing it right now, it says that it could at some point over a period of three to four weeks come back to test 70. That's the way I'm looking at it. Just I'm talking about technical analysis, but if you look at uh, CVX, CVX, and I've, I've been talking about this pattern in the market. Remember, I like to say the market gives you patterns. You've got to recognize them. I don't come up with a preconception uh, over the period of months and say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to be looking for double top patterns. It's a kind of in the background, but it's not my thinking. My thinking is, oh, wait a minute. How many have I seen going back to within a dollar, sometimes within pennies, of the exact previous high? Either it's months, it could be years, it could even be days. But those double tops have been potent turnaround moments in the market. Just hundreds of charts that I've looked at. So look at this. Yes, CVX, 139.43 is the high of the 7th of February. Pulls back. Then it goes for three days. The fourth day, what does it do? It goes to what? 139.44 for a leg F, which, which becomes a peak F. And now we've gone one to one to the downside. And that's just saying, be careful because there could be profit taking plus this step back by Putin. I, I you know, I've watched, I, I don't study him, but I've kind of watched him peripherally for long enough to know that he has a methodology his methodology is to get as far as he can while saying something completely different. Me? Like the little boy in school. We used to do this when we were in school. We'd, 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 we'd slap our hands like this and then quickly hold our neck and then look around at the, at, the, at, the, at the person behind us. And the teacher would look up and say, whoever it was behind uh, by and say, John, out the class. And that's exactly what Putin does. He's a he's a faker. He he just understands so well the mentality of people that he's dealing with. So what he does, he steps as far as he can, and then he makes like he's backing backing away. And where does he back away to? Like it's like the market. He backs away to where it was two three days ago. So I'm saying to you, just keep in mind that there's a game being played. That's one area. The other area is the Fed. I'm going to just go off on a tangent again, but that's the way I like to do it. Look at the TLT. Look at the bonds. Oh, I have to do this chart. I'll do this. And as I'm doing this chart, I look for other questions uh, that pertain to, this, to what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, Paul says, uh, Paul says, uh, what did he say? He said, yeah, you ain't kidding the days, yeah. Uh, they're cooking the books, setting it up for a big fall. You know, I, that's something I think for all of us back in the mind. But I think you have to deal with what you've got. And look what we've got here. This is the 30-year Treasury bond yield, almost above last week's high. In fact, let me just be careful so that I'm doing the right thing. Uh, 2237, 20, 22, no, can't be. It's 23. 53 and 2353. We've just matched last week's high in the yield. If we, if now, if we pull back, you have to pull back a full week to get a peak B. But if there's one tick above this high, you've extended leg B. It takes you all of next week to actually call it a peak B. And look at the 14, look at the, sorry, look at the 10 year Treasury bond, uh, Treasury note yield, the TNX. And look at the five year. Look, they're almost, <laughs> I wouldn't say they're overlapping, but they are so close. They haven't been this close. Oh, that, I, I just, I, I can't even go back far enough. They haven't been this close. Oh, maybe in November of 2018. But this is just telling you that yields are something that, so number one, we've got the conflict that's affecting internationally, but really is affecting the crude oil and the whole area of, I would even say commodities to a certain extent. The other area is yields. And the other area, of course, is the inflationary aspect. Remember, yields and inflation don't necessarily go together, although we've often seen them go together like in the 1970s. But they don't necessarily have to go, and they certainly don't have to go in the same percentage move. But the direction, yeah. So we've got to be careful. And look, 
Wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, is still holding really well. It's up a dollar forty-two today at 92.35. The all-time high was 98.98 percent. Uh, it came back. It's now right now eight percent or so lower. And look, even the Philadelphia Housing Index is holding well. It slipped under its um, rectangle support, and now it's trying to come back in. So all I can say is. I don't want to get carried away. I don't want to have these thoughts uh, of, the, oh, my God, or we're going over a cliff, toot, toot, beep, beep, uh, roadrunner stuff. I'm just saying this is the way I'm looking at it. Yields are within a cup formation. If they break out and start to go to the, I'm saying 25, it's really 2.5, but that's how they measure it right here. Um, it's at 41 at 23.42, 2.342. If this breaks out, and in February, we start to see 25, 25, 2.525, um, then I think we've got, to, we've got to look to see what are the areas in the market that benefit from an inflationary period, and what are the many areas they don't? And we're looking at, I don't want to get into that, it's fundamental, the, the wages, et cetera, wages are going up, and jobs, they, they, they are paying for jobs now. Let me tell you, this is something we haven't seen for a long time. We've finally got um, wage increases that people wanted for three, four years and never happened. It's happening now. Let me just check on this one second here. This is the E-mini, uh, click, click. Okay, so where are we? Yep, we stuck in that rectangle, then we made leg C. And that's what I was saying. This is the move that has to go stair step high. It doesn't have to be a big move. I prefer not to have a sudden swoop to the upside that gets taken down, rather just a steady move. We're at 44.55 right now. No, 45, 45, 44.52. It hit 44.55s. No, no big deal, but just moving away. I don't want to see everything given up. That's the most important thing. Now, let's see, we've got, so folks, for, for my subscribers, it's 10.40 right now, 10.38. We've got two minutes to go. Will we get that particular position that I said to get before 10.40 this morning? Otherwise, we're just going to have to let it go. Um, we'll see. All right, I've got that. I'm putting that away. All right, let's get back to our story. So now a couple of questions have come in. I want, oh, so the answer is for Exxon, in the bigger picture, the way I'm looking at it is I, I really think this is a peak C going to be in play in Exxon in the, in the weekly chart. Look at the XLE. I have the same thing here, a leg C, maybe a peak C this week. I could have used that phantom peak. I didn't that phantom peak right there. I just didn't need to. So I think we've got a bit of a pullback, but oil and energy is in play. So I don't disagree with what you're doing. My pricing might be a little different, but I don't disagree. So I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So a question came up. Uh, first of all, one, someone wanted to see uh, Roblox Corporation Gaming Platform, uh, RBLX, 67.77, down 53 cents. Just stuck. So many of these charts. It's, I, you know, I always do this. I just do it. But we will, at some point, I think we will take a position in ARKK. I just don't want to do it yet. And that was a wonderful chart. Folks, if you ever have a chance and you're able to get up early and you're able to look at uh, Tommy uh, O'Brien's market kickoff show, um, he really covers some technical and fundamental work in a terrific way. So he was showing, uh, I'm showing ARKK also stuck in this is ARK Innovation ETF, but he showed the Apple chart and that Buff Buffett has actually caught up uh, over, over years, a certain number of years, to her fantastic gains and huge losses. And now because uh, Buffett has such a huge portion of, of his empire, then Apple um, and I haven't got the chart. You know, oh, I have. I think I don't. I don't think. Did I get rid of it? Uh, let's just see. Did I get rid of that? Click. I guess I did. Uh, that's a pity. That was that was a keeper, but I didn't. I, I, I needed the space. So basically, what it said was that right now, Buffett's portfolio is actually doing better. Than hers. So long-term positions. That's why I was saying to a baseball in the de in the Tiger TV, your position in the Exxon uh, CVX in that particular area. I like I like the idea. I like the fact that you are you've got the bigger perspective, and that's your trading the way you're trading. You're not changing your trading for. Uh, the shorter term, you're just keeping your position. Good. So the other thing is that I, I had a question was, um, uh, yeah, it has earnings. Uh, uh, Roblox has earnings. Uh, I don't know when. I think it's this week, and we'll see what happens. Maybe it just shoots up. Some of these have to hold. You know, the stock that I, I, I liked. Oh, I, I need to talk about this. Sorry, I've got a bunch of things and questions lined up, but I have to talk about it. So Snap was going to be one that I wanted to buy today. I've just left it alone for the moment. And one of the reasons is I needed to think a little bit more about it. I did this a little bit quickly the other day, and I said, oh, my goodness, this is going to chap me volume price climax reversal with a huge gap down on the, on the, on the uh, third. Yeah, on the third of February. A huge island reversal plunges down to the 20 under 25 and was trading just the day before that in the 30, 34, 35 area. So then when I did had a chance to go back and look at it, the volume price climax has to be the day of the massive move down on horrible news to usually a, a yearly low or a monthly low, just a major low that it hasn't seen in a long time. And then it has to reverse back up. It doesn't have to have island reversal, but within two days, it's got to have the big reversal to the upside. And there's a massive, except the volume came on the, the next day, 
was that earnings or something? And then it went shooting up. It gapped up. The, one of the biggest island reversals. Not that you've seen there are plenty of others, but a big island reversal, and it's holding really well. That just says to me, Snap is more in play than many of the other um, tech stocks that don't have what they came up with, whatever it was that was so positive in their earnings, etc. And that makes it in play. But I decided that I didn't want to be risky there. I wanted to buy a particular situation only if it met our conditions. And if it didn't, which it hasn't because we're not in it, and it starts to pull back, we've got time. I'm in no rush now to do any buying unless it's very select areas. Uh, we have a particular area that has been absolutely inundated with lower lows and lower highs and much lower lows and then much lower high. And, and we were in it as... I took two positions that we split as a starter position. And I don't know if that's going to work, but it's in an area that we, all of a sudden we, we're hearing a um, uh, political talk that says it could be favorable to this particular sector. We'll see. Now, the other thing I want to and the other is that we are in the potential for uh, a recovery in the socioeconomic and socializing and eating our aspect of the of COVID as it fades away, as all pandemics eventually just fade away, they break into various uh, um, formats, and each one gets more vicious in the attack, but very quick and not long lasting, and then they just it fizzles out. So it'll be there as a product of our um, healthcare COVID. There are serious consequences for people that have had it and have had some heart issues. But I'm just saying, in terms of the pandemic. That's changing, and we'll see. So SNAP doesn't quite fit that particular uh, situation. I just want to go back to our uh, short-term trade, oh, only because I, I want it missed by a day. My rule of thumb is it has to be that day, that big, sharp pullback. It was the next day. So I didn't see that until too late. And my rule of thumb is that if you have that reversal, you can go 28 sessions above that low and not even get close to it. But you could go sideways, but you don't get close to it. And if you hold even well through the 28 days, you can double that to 56 days. So I don't know. I just say to myself, you know, it, it's taken too long to break out of a 41.97. It's taken three days. It still hasn't done it. So maybe we'll just wait, be patient. It's not an area that I need to jump into. All right. So let's get back to our story. And I want you to do this right here. Uh, this is the E-mini. Uh, there it is. So what's the chapter rate methodology? Oh, I didn't have a chance to do it. I always do that. People who know me do that. I go from the left side. I draw the cup. I try to find a place that says, in this time frame, you can't get an equal left side, right side price time match, but you could get a nice move. Usually I choose some kind of a do smallest doji candle. I would have done this, chosen that candle right there. That's this little tiny doji candle right there right there and then i would have said okay now i can go left side to right side make it green and you don't have to do all this fancy stuff because i'm doing this to demonstrate you can just do it visually you could just print it out and just do it on a piece of paper you can just say hey wait a minute this is the number of bars so it'll be the number of bars that gets to the high that was made of 46.62.25 and we are What's this here? 62, 4460. So now we've got, and we're at 4461.25. There it is. Live. This is like a, like a little, uh, uh, like, a, like a live webinar we've got here. Intraday webinar. There it is. There's your leg D and Chaffin Wave methodology. We're always looking for Ds. You can go to E, F, and G, but D is your buy mode minimum, uh, minimum target. So here we are. Boom. Achieved it. I like this action very much. I want you to see the give back go back in the cup formation towards that left side high. If it goes even higher, there could be a burst of energy. I'm not sure about the close because they're still going to be nervous about tomorrow with the Fed. But there could be a burst of energy that takes it quite a bit higher. Okay, so now what do we got? We've got questions coming in. I, I wrote some of them down. Uh, will I be able to get to them? Uh, okay. So TRO, we spoke about that. It was in my newsletter as something to watch and that maybe uh, we can use it as something like if you have a, an IRA and you just want to put money in that goes with the market, 
this is something that you can do. You could go to the SPY, the Diamonds, the Qs, but this is one. This is T. Rowe Price, Actively Managed Funds and Programs. Then I just took it off the list and said, you know what? This is in its own world. This is acting more like the NASDAQ than anything else. And, and then I decided when I was looking at it that actively managed funds are probably seeing a huge slowdown and stocks like a Schwab are getting the benefit. Schwab is now digesting big gains, but maybe that's what we'll see because the IAI, uh, iShares broker dealing ETF, is only hit the highs. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just let, let, let me go through a couple of things. The fixed index this is really important because the fixed index is down huge. It's down at 2588, down 8.61%. So um, the way I look at it, uh, the, um, the fact that there's been 32.04 was the high yesterday. And it, really the news, the de facto news wasn't anywhere close to what it is when it's the real news, that is the rumor news. And that's just telling me that there is a chance that this count, if we can get through tomorrow with the Fed, that this counter trend bounce, and I'm calling it a counter trend bounce, could actually last a little longer. It makes me kind of upset that today I didn't get into the uh, uh, one long position that uh, I usually have been getting into. Um, but that's that's okay because we've got others that are actually so far working out quite nicely. So I'm not complaining. Uh, we do have we are in the market via the, the position we have in, in the volume, the spy volume, uh, and that's holding holding very well. So what I'm looking at here is if by three o'clock. 
The Dow is gone. It's at 4.45. If the Dow can hold above 4.30 through 3 o'clock, it's really 3.20 to 3.40 Eastern time, before uh, the hour before the close, that if anyone's getting worried about tomorrow, what the Fed's going to do, we know what the Fed's going to do. They have to raise rates at some point. But if the market gets worried or if there's other bad news, that's going to be key. But if the Dow is able and the S&P are able to hold at the levels, I'll give you the S&P right now, up. Uh, at 44.69, uh, almost the high of the day. If if it's able to hold above 44.52, that's good. If it pulls back and gives back the 67 point gain, and it's now only up 36 or, or less, that that's really not good because then we have to go through tomorrow, which could be quite shaky. But I like the fact that the pattern that we're looking at is remained in the rectangle position, and we are going now trying for the second arch. So just think of it that way. It's still a, the general market is still in the bear phase, but this is a counter trend rally. Bear phase meaning the trend is down, and we wait to see how this un, un, just results. Stay tuned, you've got Larry Presenter coming up, wonderful shows coming up. Larry, 